What's up gamers, it's Absurd here, and I was invited to playtest a new multiplayer focused mecha game called Mecha Break by CSUN Games. You might have seen their debut trailer at the Game Awards. Myself and a dozen or so other creators got to play 6 v 6 PvP matches with the devs for about 3 hours, and there's a lot to cover. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to record my own footage, so the footage here is provided by CSUN. This video is not sponsored by CSUN in any way, so feel confident that my opinions are unbiased, at least in that regard. The core design of Mecha Break feels focused around multiplayer with team-oriented roles. Mechs are called biped strikers. Yes, the devs are aware of BS being the shorthand, and don't seem motivated to change that. Each striker fulfills a different role in a multiplayer squad. Attacker, brawler, sniper, defender, and support. As of the test, there appeared to be a preliminary framework for customizing your striker within those roles, but we didn't get access to swapping parts from the striker's standard loadout. Before I get into the different roles and striker models, Understanding the objective-based PvP will provide better context. As I mentioned, we played 6 v 6 PvP matches on two different maps, each having its own objective and being designed around that objective. There will also be a 3 v 3 mode and a battle royale mode with up to 48 players, though we were unable to try those modes out in the test. The first map we played contained three capture nodes, that when captured earned points over time for your team. The objective was to hold nodes for a longer period of time than your opponent. This map encouraged each team to have a defender and a support for holding down nodes against attack, as well as having faster ranged harassers like a sniper to interrupt the capture progress of enemies on other nodes. This game mode had a good mix of team-based combat with opportunities to sneak off in ninja and open node, or break off to plus one your buddy who's getting ganked. Having multiple nodes kept the fight migrating around the map and was rich for evolving diverse approaches to solving the game mode. The second map had a capture the flag style objective where a key would spawn at a different set location on the map. The goal was to grab the key when it spawned and successfully transport it to a launch pad to initiate the launch of what I think was a warhead. This objective encouraged mobility and team support to keep the key runner alive until the launch completed, which rewarded 30 points to your team. Speaking of points, each kill in both game modes was worth a single point. Comparing that to the 30 points earned from the capture the flag mode demonstrates the importance of playing to win objectives rather than playing to get kills. Though with a 30 second respawn after death, killing enemies made completing objectives quite a bit easier and could snowball into victory. During this respawn period, you can view a kill cam or cycle through and view any of the POVs of active players on the map, before a brief animation of your pilot relaunching their striker sortie to get back into the game. Aside from these PvP modes, while in the game, it looked like there were roughly 10 other maps that we couldn't access during the test. They may not have been PvP maps or even had their own unique objectives, but I expect there to be a lot more than we saw during the test, especially with the Battle Royale mode being announced. So PvP enthusiasts, stay tuned. Now getting to the mech models or strikers, I have to mention that I didn't get a chance to play every model, however the strikers are all described in great detail on the website. Each striker has 5 abilities, which are usually weapon abilities with a magazine capacity, but sometimes utility abilities like a speed boost or shield module. All abilities are balanced by a cooldown. Ammo seem to regenerate over time when not at full ammo capacity rather than having a reload button and animation. Most weapons used a standard proximity and camera based lock-on that will be familiar to mecha players, though some weapons like sniper rifles required free aim. 
Each weapon was unique to the striker model, though that could change in the future when customization is fleshed out or er, armored out. I primarily piloted the Lumine, which swaps between damaging and repairing nano drones that stack damage or heal over time effects to influence a fight. The effects were slow, but required high APM with frequent weapon and target swapping to keep up as many effects as possible and at maximum stacks. I also played one of the snipers called Aquila, if memory serves. It isn't on the website currently, and I wasn't given footage for it either. Anyway, its long range rifle had two magazines, one for firing with a normal lock on, and the other for free aim sniper shots with a scope. The sniper required managing ammunition and positioning to use the free aim shots as often as possible while using the standard lock-on to harass mobile targets. I'm not really an FPS gamer, and with the speed of this game, the free aim shots were pretty tough to land without planning and positioning. The Tricera is the only defender model, and it played like one. Much slower than the other strikers, it made up for its speed with high defense and a turret shield mode that prevented movement but boosted defense while firing dual miniguns for massive damage. I was able to defend capture points well with the Tricera, though it felt too slow and clunky to be effective on the CTF map. The final striker I played was the Welkin, a brawler that specialized in hard-hitting and stun-locking melee attacks with a battle axe. Vulcan also boasts a powerful beam weapon that can help finish foes who outrun your melee assault. Our team in one of the games played all Welkins as a meme to nuke enemies with six simultaneous beam attacks. It was funny, but not a very effective strategy for winning objectives. People played all the other strikers, like the Alyssness that has a self-revive or repair combo for survivability, a mobile aerial specialist called the Falcon that harassed with missiles, and the Panther that was a defensive melee build that nobody really seemed to like. You'll have to check out videos from some of the other testers who played those to get more information, and I'll link those videos in the description as I find them. Overall, the combat was smooth and could be very fast-paced depending on the strikers being used. The map objectives and role-based team compositions place a huge emphasis on tactics and voice communication to be effective. There's a lot of potential for developing meta strategies and meta team comps for the different maps, which is super fun for those who like to theory craft and strategize. The game ran super smooth and the online servers were stable. I only remember one person crashing or disconnecting, which did happen twice, but otherwise, aside from the occasional frame drop, there were no issues. Very impressive performance for a game at this stage in development. All of us testing the game wanted to keep playing past the allotted time and had overwhelmingly positive feedback for the test. However, I did have some criticism and hesitation regarding the final product. The character models for the two pilots in-game looked very generic. However, after seeing the pilots recently posted to their website, I'm a bit more optimistic about the characterization and art style that will be in the final product for the pilots. There was no customization aside from changing pilots, but there was a loadout screen where we could have swapped weapons if they were available. There's also a paint customization demo on their website, but we didn't have access to that either. The customization seems to be a far cry from what you might expect by playing Armored Core, but it appears to be a future. Time will tell to what extent. My main criticisms about the combat are relatively minor. The Lumine lacked the impactful playmaking potential that I expect with support roles in other games, and felt more like a maintainer than a lifesaver, as the heals were easily out DPS by focus fire, which is probably good for balance, though the impact of Lumine in combat was relatively unnoticeable compared to the other flashier strikers, for better or worse. The stagger from melee attacks was pretty unforgiving, but the ability to parry melee attacks felt really good. 
I rarely ended up in melee, but when I did, it felt impossible to escape in some of the strikers. The Tricera's low speed prevented it from feeling viable on the CTF map, but was really strong on the map with captured nodes. So depending on how the queuing in map selection works, strikers like Tricera might see less play if they aren't viable on all the maps. There was no controller support for the test, but the devs mentioned they were working on it. The game is supposed to be released for console, so controller support for PC should be easy enough to include. Hopefully it's in the next test. We also didn't get a chance to try any PvE content outside of a small tutorial, but based on the trailer, there looks to be multiplayer PvE in the future, and based on this lore discussion channel on the Discord, I'm hoping CSUN invests in the game's story. And that's pretty much it for criticism. The game was good. None of these little gripes are deal breakers. However, my larger hesitation regards how the game will be monetized. The pilots and strikers remind me of champions that you would find in other games like League of Legends, which means they could be monetized in similar fashion. In today's gaming monetization climate, I can't help but worry about Gamba roles for weapon unlocks, pilots, or even striker models. Thankfully, there was no evidence of that in the game that we played, but the potential for predatory monetization does exist. That will be an issue for the future. But for now, hop over to the Mecha Break website or Discord to apply for the next closed alpha test. There is a questionnaire to fill out before you can apply that has some pretty sus questions about monetization. Answer them like a good gamer and maybe we won't see this promising game fall victim to its predatory monetization practices like so many others have. The alpha registration closes on the 17th, so don't miss it. Until next time gamers, like, subscribe, and ask questions about anything I might have missed in the comments. I'll answer whatever I can. See you in the next alpha test.